Hi, so this is a slightly different video from normal. I normally do microcontroller projects, but um, I didn't find much information about these batteries online and I was quite interested to see what was inside them. So these are um, Makita LXT batteries, model numbers uh, BL1830B, BL1850B and things like that. And they power a whole load of Makita LXT tools. Um, there are, I think, around about 100 of these tools, all of which take these batteries. Some of them take two batteries. So I was interested to find out why the official Makita batteries cost about £60 and more if you get a higher size one. And the, um, the cheap clone batteries you can get cost only about £18. So these are over three times the price. Um, and in this particular case, this one is um, supposedly lower capacity than this battery. So let's have a look inside them. Um, these batteries, uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Um, they have four screws in the corners. The Makita one you'll find has a, um, a little plug in there that you have to drill out. And um, these two actually are using Torx screws. This one just uses standard Phillips, which is perhaps a sign of the, the quality of the rest of it. Um, so yeah, once you've unscrewed them, you can pull them off. You probably want to do this with a discharged battery, unlike me, um, because if you do accidentally short things out, it could get quite nasty. This one I have already partially disassembled. I've taken that screw out so we can see behind it. So these are the three batteries. Um, we've got the Makita one on the left, and these are two clone ones. I mean, you can see immediately that the printed circuit board on the Makita one is obviously much bigger, um, and it would appear to have a lot more stuff on it as well. Um, looking at actually how the battery is connected to the tool, these two on each of them are um, obviously the main power for the drill, and the contacts are doubled up to, um, to get you a bit more uh, to get you a bit more current transfer. Um, so the edges of the batteries, which are, this is like the full span of, vol of voltage because the batteries kind of are connected together like that. Um, these ones on here are actually um, metal tabs that are soldered straight through onto the PCB. This one actually has one metal tab that's soldered through onto the PCB and one wire that runs through. Um, this one just has two wires that go straight from the tabs. Um, and you can see there's kind of a big blobby bit of solder on there that they've put on. Um, the other interesting thing is that um, these, while they're smaller PCBs, they are um, dual-sided. And actually, if I flip this over carefully, you can see that there's uh, a bunch of stuff on there, including what is almost certainly a microcontroller. Um, and the same you can you can just about see from this by flipping it over. This one, because it's soldered on, it's it's quite hard to flip over. So there may well be more stuff on here. Um, so you may think that with a microcontroller on it, it's going to be doing some fancy cell balancing, but actually it's not, um, because the wires that are going here, you've got these two wires for power. This one is connected to the first span of batteries, so that's only going to be four volts. And this is in fact a temperature sensor. Um, and it's exactly the same on this side as well. And in fact, the temperature sensor is not doing anything smart at all. It's just going between this contact and this contact. So um, I imagine a lot of tools are actually extremely basic and they just use that temperature sensor to, um, to cut off the controller. Uh, the slightly surprising thing is that there really isn't any protection um, between these two. On the official Makita one, you've actually got something that looks a lot like um, two fuses in there. Now, these are L50 they've got written on them, so it could be that they're 50 amps each. Um, so you would hope that it's not going to completely vaporise everything if you accidentally shorted those out. On these, um, it could get really messy if you do it. So um, the battery cells in these have no writing on at all. Um, I've actually had a look under the um, under the cardboard surround on there. Um, but you know, at least the cardboard surround in here is actually protecting the battery slightly. But these are probably cheap no-name cells. These ones, um, I believe, are, um, are Sony cells. 
Uh, I can't be absolutely sure, but that seems to be what everyone reckons um, Mickey to use online. Um, but yeah, so while these don't have cell balancing, you can actually see these wires going in on each side here. Um, so I'd be pretty convinced that this Makita pack at least does have it. It seems that early Makita packs, so um, this is a BL1830B um, because it's got this battery meter on. And I believe that the, um, the original BL1830s may have had a battery circuit that was a lot more like this. So yeah, you would expect these to, um, the cells to become slightly unbalanced after a while and probably for the battery to fail prematurely compared to this. Uh, in fact, I've had this one for about a year now and um, looking at the voltages along all cells, they're already very slightly different, um, even after having a full charge. So um, this is definitely something where if you really want to keep these for a long time, you could actually look at soldering on cell balancing wires and bringing out a cord that you could use with a, um, with a separate, for instance, a model aircraft um, charging controller that could actually properly cell balance these cells. Um, but yeah, that's it, um, quite interesting. The, um, these ones, also if you press the button, you'll notice that the, the cell charge light stays lit. On this one, they don't. Um, and I can only assume that that's because this is actually quite a dumb arrangement. And um, you've got two wires here, which are very obviously connected just to the battery completely. Um, so I imagine on the back of here, while I can't see completely, um, there appear to be a bunch of um, diodes and resistors, which I think are just coming up with a very simple battery life based on the, um, based on the voltage that's on the cells. Whereas this one, um, they've got a ribbon cable with a whole bunch of different, different wires in. Um, so it's almost certainly talking to the microcontroller, which is why it's able to keep the LEDs lit for a little while after this, um, uh, after the button's been pressed. So yeah, I mean, overall, um, I'd be a little bit concerned about the safety of these. Uh, if you did have these chucking around in a toolbox and somehow those managed to get shorted out, it's unlikely, but if they did, um, it could actually cause, cause a fire or something. Whereas on this, it's much more likely that it would just blow those fuses. But otherwise, um, while this is undoubtedly a much better battery pack, made by Makita, it's kind of hard to imagine that these packs would last um, less than a third of the time, in which case you might as well just um, just keep buying cheaper packs and replacing them when they break. Um, so yeah, I hope that was, um, that was some interest and thanks for watching.